in your own words, what differentiates you from your opponent? I mean, I'm not corrupt. I mean, I right now the governor is under investigation um, from so many agencies. I'm going to try to go through them all. U.S. Uh, Attorney General's Office, U.S. Attorney's Office, State Police, uh, most importantly, FBI. And the reason that he's under federal investigation is because he basically wrote a bid and gave a contract to his, uh, his friends. And these are sort of old style politics. And corruption isn't just bad because it's, it's bad and immoral. It actually impacts the delivery of services and the ability um, to make this state affordable. Education costs more, uh, taxes cost more. So we have to really take public corruption seriously. With me, you're gonna get a leader with vision, a problem solver, someone who isn't beholden to anyone, somebody who wants to get things done. I can talk about my vision for Rhode Island. First thing we need to do is provide a world-class education to all students, no matter their zip code. It's a civil rights issue, but it also is an economic issue. The second thing is we need to be more competitive. We need to have a better business environment, which means uh, reducing regulation and reducing taxes, making sure that Rhode Island is an affordable place to live, work, and raise a family, which means we must tackle the housing crisis. The third thing, and I get really excited when I talk about Rhode Island, is leveraging our assets. We have everything in this state. Uh, we have interstates, railway, deep water ports, 400 miles of coastline. We are strategically located as a gateway to New England between New York and Boston, and we need to leverage those assets. A great way to do that is to lead in something, and you know, when we think about uh, Boston or in Massachusetts, we think of biopharma. Connecticut, we think insurance. New York, we think finance. We need a thing that defines Rhode Island. For Rhode Island, what that is, is that's the blue economy, which is the sustainable use of the ocean uh, for economic development. That should be the thing that we lead in. If we do this, if we have the political will, it'll be a time of unparalleled success for Rhode Island. But we need new leadership. All right. Your political hero and why? I have to say right now, it's Lena Folks. Um, she ran a great campaign. She is smart, successful, and she was in it for the right reason. She didn't need to do that. She was at a point in her career and in her life where she didn't need to get into, uh, into the arena. And she did it because she wanted to serve the state. And no matter what your party is, you have to admire the motives and what she did, and also her record of accomplishments. And, you know, what we saw with the governor when she called, and she is just a woman of such grace. She called after uh, losing, and it was a close race, so I'm sure it was really, really hard. Mm -hmm. She called to concede, which is what you do, and the governor said, you know, um, yeah, hang up, hang up on her, basically. And that just shows, you know, he also, when uh, Dr. Alexander Scott endorsed Talena, he attacked Dr. Alexander Scott. Then his lieutenant governor had to come in and defend Dr. Alexander Scott. And uh, also, you also see why maybe Gina didn't talk to him for a few years. I mean, the governor seems to have an issue with strong, smart women that are leaders. And I want to bring it back to Helena because that's who it's really about. And she really uh, deserves credit for putting herself out there, running a good race, mm -hmm. and bringing good ideas to the state and presenting a vision of leadership that isn't about uh, the old ways. And I intend to ensure that I, I finish that and we no longer have Dan McKee, but Helena was great. She is great. Well, weeks ago, you were asked who your political hero was, and you said DeSantis. Right. I yeah. asked you today who your political hero was, and now you say Helena Folks? Well, whoa, whoa, whoa. Well, Hold on. Okay. What exit are we getting off here, here? Here's the thing, is that you have to look at certain things that you like. You're not going to always like everything about everyone. So I was asked about DeSantis in an economic forum, and the okay. reality is that uh, Florida is doing well economically. The economic policies are ones that are having businesses move there. Okay. There is economic success. When we're talking about a leader now, when we're talking about Helena, we have somebody with grace, a record of success, and someone who put on a good fight. So you can, you can put those two things together. They're separate comments, but it's all, you know, leadership is leadership. So there are policies that I admire, and there are people. And Helena is one of those. She ran a good race. Yeah. She has a record of success. And, um, and she's a great uh, female leader. Like, we should give credit no matter what party you're in, to people who get in uh, the political ring when they don't have to. If I heard right, you like, so you like DeSantis the way he ran, he runs Florida. You didn't like that he sent us a couple of plane loads of, of uh, migrants to Martha's Vineyard. Uh, correct. I am about, so the and you economic... Wouldn't like, would you, you wouldn't like that if he did that to, to Rhode Island, would you? 
as a governor of Rhode right. Island, I don't think any governor would like okay. would like to deal with that. I mean, that is you're going to we, we have a, a housing crisis now. Right. We have a homelessness crisis. And so that would be difficult for any governor to deal with. Did you call Helena? Have you spoken to her since the election? And I'd love to listen to that call. Do you have a recording of it? Uh, no, but I, I, I haven't. But you know, it, I don't need a call to make a statement yeah. that's true. I don't need anybody. I'll just say. I, so, no. Um, and what I say about her is just what I feel, which is I watched, like anybody else, I watched the race. I watched the grace in which she had a hard race that mm -hmm. she almost won and the grace in which she tried to make the right phone call and how she was treated afterwards. And I, I just, um, I, I say what I feel. I don't care which, which party you are. If you do the right thing and you're a good leader, I will talk, I will take a person as a person. Right. Of course, a reporter would say, well, you're propping up Helena because that's a way to knock Governor McKee. In fact, you, you're, you're really going after him. You suggest that he's tough on women. In I mean, general, you said that. I'm just, I mean, I'm, I look at things, I, I'm looking at the things that everybody else is looking at. And so I don't know what Helena is going to do. I don't know who she's going to support. That's not going to change my assessment of her race or of her as a leader. The it is what it is. The original question was, who's your political hero? You said Helena Fox. Right now, yes. Look at what she's done. She was an outsider, a successful businesswoman, somebody that didn't need to do this, came in and put, in, put up a good fight. And then when she lost, she, she was... Uh, she acted with grace, and she was not treated that way. And to tell you the truth, she is still acting like a leader does, even in being treated in that way. And you went a little further to bring in Dr. Alexander Scott and Sabina Matos. You're, you're knitting something here. Well, together. I mean, I'm not knitting it. The governor is. He's knitting his pattern of behavior together. I don't need to do it for him. He's doing it for everybody in front of everybody's face.